This is the story of an ordinary student named Takamiya, and he has a beautiful classmate named Kagari, who is very popular in his school. Because of her fame, she was nicknamed a princess by her schoolmates. And just like our protagonist and other standard students, the princess only goes by bus to school. But our protagonist was wondering why she would ride a public vehicle, and so far as he knows, Kagari is the only daughter of a very wealthy businessman. And the two were not only in the same class, they were also sitting next to each other. Once, Takamiya accidentally dropped his rubber, and as he was about to pick it up, Kagari suddenly picked it up and handed it to him. He thought he was lucky, because Kagari helped him. But that became a reason for him to be intimidated and beaten by Kagari fans, who envy the place where he sits. One day, his teacher ordered him to take the papers to his room. But as he walked in the hallway, his classmate, who was with Kagari, took his papers. When he was walking to throw the garbage out, he noticed something moving inside the trash can. He pulled it out and saw a rabbit-shaped toy with thin things written on it, and according to the scriptures, a building will fall. And a few seconds after seeing this, a part of a building fell in his direction. He thought he was dead at that moment, but when he opened his eyes, he was completely surprised, because Kagari was carrying him, and they were floating in the air. And before he could ask any more questions, two bunny robots attacked them. While Kagari was fighting the robots, a woman called for Takamiya. He thought she was Kagari's friend, so he quickly went to her. But when he arrived there, a a large number of robots, similar to what he had seen, appeared, and Kagari was fighting them as they intended to kill Takamiya. However, before they could do that, Kagari quickly returned to rescue him and burned all the bunny robots. And our protagonist thought he was dreaming, because everything that was happening was kind of impossible to happen, and the fact that Kagari was saving him for him was also a bit strange. However, Kagari explained everything, saying that she is a witch with the mission to protect him because for her, Takamiya is her princess. Suddenly, a robot got behind Kagari, and he was about to attack her. So Takamiya ran to block the attack, but he ended up being hit by the robot and ended in unconsciousness. One by one, the robots rose up and were about to attack him again, but Kagari became furious and lost her patience with the opponents. So she released powerful flames. They destroyed all the robots. And when Takamiya recovered consciousness, he was inside a private room with Kagari. She told him what happened and how she took him home. Then Takamiya realizes that Kagari was secretly protecting him, and that was the reason why Kagari always walked as a passenger in public transport. That was also the reason why they sat side by side and how they both had the same tasks in their class. One day, when Takamiya was on the bus to school, Kagari asked if she could sit next to him, and because of that, the Kagari fans became much more brave with our protagonist, and that jealousy was only growing, because even on the way to school, Kagari was always on Takamiya's side. Suddenly his stomach hurt because of the malignant look of the students towards him. And when he came out of the bathroom, Takamiya was confronted by those who intimidated him and beat him before. Fortunately, Kagari suddenly appeared to stop his schoolmates and protected him from bullying. During the lunch break, Kagari invited him to eat together, but there were still a lot of angry people, and Takamiya couldn't stand the words and the fulminating looks of all Kagari fans who were following them. So he went out. As he walked, he remembered the incident in which the building collapsed, and there he met a woman who had cat ears. She confronted him, and he said it was she who started the attack on him the other day. And like Kagari, she also turned into a witch, and when she was about to take Takamiya away, Kagari appeared to save him again. And the rabbit robots, those they fought the other day, have reappeared, and now there are more of them, including some giants who started attacking Kagari and Takamiya. These robots attacked them at the same time, and when he opened his eyes, Kagari was on top of him. But he realized that he should not be angry with her. Instead, he should twist and trust her. Full of wounds and scratches, Takamiya was very worried about her and felt frustrated not being able to help. But Kagari didn't care what was happening to her, as long as she could protect. Because of this, Takamiya promised that he would not avoid her anymore, and as Takamija was concerned about Kagari, she told him that she could immediately end the enemies, as long as he obeyed everything she said. While they were under the robots who attacked them, the Kagari suddenly launched a powerful attack that threw out all the bots above, including the one who was controlling them. Then Kagari appeared with a fierce air in front of the opponent while carrying the Takamiya. She was about to finish the opponent, but the enemy still managed to escape. The next day, 
the teacher announced that everyone had new classmates, and the girls entered along with the one they both fought the other day. Being all enemies now, being the Kureishin Kuiruin Akatsura Meyakana, and Kagari knew very well that this and five girls were witches, like her. And while on the bus, Takamiya thought about what was happening in his life, because a lot of crazy things happened all of a sudden. He was also surprised that Kagari had not taken the bus to school that day, and when he arrived at the place he thought was the school, in the classroom, the four witches, who were the transferred sisters of his class, were tied up, and Kagari was pointing a gun at them. Yes, the reason Kagari wasn't on the bus is because she had already gone to school to torture them, and when he asked why she was doing that to everybody, she mentioned that these girls could be a big problem for him, and that's why Kagari'd hesitate to punish the girls in an instant. So Takamiya took the opportunity to ask Kurishin why she wanted to take him, so she replied that they needed his body and the white thing that was inside him, and as there was another witch that Kagari hadn't attacked, she suddenly attacked from above and took Takamija. The four witches also escaped and were about to fight Kagari, but in less than a minute they were immediately defeated, as they could not match Kagari's power. So they fled immediately before Kagari set fire to them all, and once again our protagonist woke up in Kagari's house. And in the room, they talked about those who wanted to take him. And according to Kagari, she wants our protagonist to live a normal life. But in order for this to happen, they must defeat those who want to harm him. And when hearing that, our protagonista begged her to tell him everything about witches. He also wanted her to teach him how to use magic so he could help when someone attacked again. One day, while Takamiya was at home, Kagari called him because she wanted to find him. And as they walked along the road, she said she would tell him the things he wanted to know about witches. Witches. And according to Kagari, there are two classes of witches. These are the witches of the tower, being those five women against whom they fought, witches from the towers. And there is also the witch workshop, which in this case is the class to which she belongs. Kagari said that the work of the witches' workshop was to protect the world. On the other hand, the witches in the tower moved on their own and thought only of themselves. This group didn't care if anything happened to the human world or if someone died. While they were in the market, they they met some witches from the tower. Kagari made sure to protect the Takamiya, and the opponents seemed weak when compared to Kagari, and were easily defeated. So they left the place immediately, and when they were on their way home, Takamiya seemed disturbed by what had happened. So Kagari decided to teach him how to use magic. So she asked him to follow him, and when they arrived at their real destination, he wondered why they were at school. There he met Kagari's mother. On the same day, those five girls tried again to defeat Kagari, and obviously they were quickly defeated by her. As our main characters were on the bus and were about to go home, suddenly a woman and a humanoid crocodile appeared. The driver of the, the bus disappeared, and the bus was gradually covered in darkness. The woman rose up and approached them, and she is also a member of the Tower Witches. Kagari couldn't move because of what the woman threw on her. Takamiya got into the middle of everything to try to protect Kagari, but the woman stabbed him. At that moment, our protagonist realized that everything that happened in his body was transferred to Kagari, but this only happened when the two were together. He also discovered that the reason Kagari was so strong was because her power came from within him, and her power only increased when they concluded that agreement. And for that reason, Kagari was even willing to sacrifice her own life just to protect him. And according to this woman, if Takamiya wanted to save Kagari, he would need to give her more power. And then the woman picked up a round object, and he should swallow it to unleash his true power. And when the woman tried to make Takamiya swallow him, the object exploded, and Kagari showed her power, changing her appearance and suddenly attacking the woman. And after receiving some injuries due to the attack, the woman decided to retreat. And when Takamiya woke up, he saw Kagari unconscious next to him, and immediately took her to the hospital. He received something that looked like a sweet from his father. He quickly put it in his pocket and hid it in the desk drawer, and the day of the real training on which the Takamiya will learn to use magic finally arrived. The first thing he did was jump in front of the Kagari and after he jumped, he was surprised at the height he managed to reach. It makes the wearer much lighter, allowing him to move much more easily, and the next thing she taught him was to fly using the saucer, which surprised Takamiya. And no matter how much he tried to replicate Kagari's movements, he couldn't get out of the place, so Kagari decided to take him on the flight, so he could get used to it until he was ready to call his own dish. On the way home, they saw a woman who seemed to be suffering bullying by four other women. Takamiya wanted to help, but Kagari didn't want to, because they shouldn't interfere in the problems of humans who had nothing to do with witches anymore. And due to Takamija's great desire to want to
to help people, he managed to take his bowl and ride on it to save the woman, but he couldn't control it, and so he crushed the group of women. The angry women approached to catch him, but Kagari was already right behind them, and to give a lesson to these women, she blew them all up, and soon afterwards told Takamiya to be careful, because she discovered that this group of women were just making a trap for him. These women were enemies, who were also part of the witches of the tower. After that, in a restaurant, the five witches of the tower gathered to discuss how they could defeat Kagari. They thought in a way that instead of fighting face to face with her, they could only expect Takamiya to be alone and take this opportunity to be able to kidnap him. However, some of them thought that this was not possible, as the two were always together. Soon after, another member of the witches of the tower arrived. She had already fought Kagari on the bus, and she wanted to work with them to be able to defeat Kagari and capture Takamiya. The next day, the witches from the tower began to attack again and were divided into two groups. One of them went to Takamiya, the other three foot Kagari, and the woman who worked with them planted everything they would do. So, our protagonist was caught, and when he was about to be taken, a giant Paluccia bear suddenly appeared. He immediately picked up the two robot rabbits, and so our protagonist ended up being saved by Kazumi, who in the case is Takamiya's younger sister. He was shocked to see her there, for he didn't even know the fact that his sister was also a witch. And the opponent also used a robot to fight against Takamiya's sister's bear. And another member of the Tower Witches just arrived to help his battlemates. So Kazumi revealed the true shape of her pet. He became even bigger than his two opponents, making them both look like ants and simply stepped on them. Thus, the opponents were defeated and Takamiya hurried to go to his sister to ask for help. As he was worried and wanted to get to Akagari. But to his surprise and relief, he saw her sitting in the hand of the giant pelvic bear and who faced it were only defeated. And Takamiya also learned that his sister and Akagari also had an agreement on the place and day that Takamiya should be under his care and members of the witches of the tower was not shown, but surely the witches of that tower. Because of this incident, Akagari decided that she should live with Takamiya and even reading a book as if nothing had happened to her. The battle between Akagari and the three sleep in the same bed so that she could protect him 24 hours a day. After that, one day, Akagari went to our protagonist's house under his plan to live under the same roof as Takamiya. After hearing his explanations, the brothers were surprised when their mother immediately agreed with Akagari. In this, their mother that Akagari was already Takamiya's fiancée, and soon afterwards their mother spoke about the time when she was an intimate friend of Akagari's mother, and both agreed that when they had their children in the future, the two would make an arranged marriage between the two. Kazumi did not agree to it, but she could do nothing about it. So Akagari took Takamiya and left. When they arrived at Akagari's house, Takamiya saw a very tall building, and he couldn't believe the things he saw inside the house. And when they reached Akagari's room, someone was waiting for her. That caught her unaware, and she told Takamiya to go to the 12th floor and shut the elevator door. His visitor is called Medusa, and is also a member of the Tower of the Witches. Akagari fought with her, but she was also as strong as she was. Seeing this battle, Takamiya became worried and tried to come in to help Akagari. He put on his coat to prepare, but the elevator door got on fire and exploded. When he entered the room, he immediately approached Akagari, but she covered his eyes to protect him from danger. Suddenly, a Medusa ally whispered, and Medusa turned Akagari into stone. Takamiya did not know what to do until he saw an object on the ground, which made him remember the witch, telling him that he could unleash his true power. He hesitated to use it, but in that kind of situation, that was his only option, so he immediately swallowed it. Suddenly, a woman in white appeared, and she was the white princess, called Evermillion. The Medusa ordered her allies to attack them, but they were all defeated by the princess. Akagari's mother, who was watching the visit and drinking her coffee, was shocked to see that her house was destroyed after this powerful attack. While the three were still at the top, Evermillion told Takamiya the solution to bring Akagari's body back to life. She said he should kiss Akagari, but that left Takamiya unbelieving, and he hesitated to do so. The White Princess also informed him that the reason Akagari lost the battle was because he did not trust her enough. When Medusa woke up, Evermillion also disappeared at the same time. 
At that point, Takamiya had no choice but to follow Evermillion and immediately kiss Akagari's cheek. The five lackeys of Medusa, who had already been defeated before, ran to attack him, but Akagari gave them a lesson, and the witches of the tower were once again beaten. Then she and Medusa fought again, and this time she managed to defeat her, because Takamiya had total confidence in her. When Takamiya woke up, he was in the office nursery, being monitored by Akagari. Takamiya got up and quickly asked Akagari if she was okay, and with his eyes full of tears, he told her how worried he was, and that he thought what had happened was just a dream. But he was surprised to see Medusa and the five witches of the tower, who were always defeated by Akagari behind the curtain. Then Akagari kissed Takamiya, who got the red face, and soon told him that she did it because he kissed her before. Meanwhile, someone called Kazumi and said there would be a meeting of all the witches of the workshop about Kazami's care. They were ordered to search for the tower witches who caused trouble in Akagari's house recently, and as Akagari's home was destroyed, they returned to Takamiya's and told their mother that Akagari would live with them for now. The next day, the members of the student council and the furious student council chairman had a meeting because they were unable to find ways to separate Akagari and Takamiya, and the student council advisor was also present, and a president of the student's council ordered them to find a way to separate the two. Otherwise, he would expel them all. And when they both entered the school, their teacher Umikage called him. He said he had something, and he took them to his lab. Umikage told Takamiya about Akagari's situation, and also talked to him about the problems they are causing in his school during all this time that they are spending together. So he begged Takamiya to stay away from her. But Akagari opposed, and told the teacher that nothing could separate them. Thus, Umikag suddenly took Takamiya to a different dimension. This could not be stopped. And since Kazane was appointed to monitor the movements of the Takamiya, she was the only one who could do that. But at the moment, she was still unaware of the destruction of the seal. He also told Takamiya to be grateful to Kazane's strength, because thanks to her, he can live a free life. In this, Akagari suddenly appeared and attacked Umikage. She took Takamiya, and they immediately returned to the lab. The other day, Akagari ordered Takamiya to announce to all the students and teachers of the school for them to gather. When all gathered, Akagari went up on stage and began speaking, and using her rights with the highest post in the student council, she fired the current student council president and replaced him with Takamiya, and she as vice president. This was the method used by Akagari to make no more obstacles for them to stay together. Before returning home, they went to a toy store, and Takamiya bought something. And when Takamiya was about to pay, Kazumi kidnapped him while attacking Akagari. They departed immediately, but a great dragon followed them, and Akagari was on board. Akagari attacked them, and Kazumi lost control until they collided with a building and both fell. Akagari immediately rescued them, and the three fell into a building belonging to the witches of the workshop. Meanwhile, Medusa's five Lakai were planning to capture Takamiya, but Akagari was still awake. They patiently waited until dawn, but still could not execute their plan, because Akagari did not sleep until they themselves fell asleep. Medusa and her five lackeys knew about the White Princess, so Akagari hid them in Takamiya's house so that Kazume could not track them. After all, if they were caught by her, they could talk about the White Princess. When Takamiya entered the bathroom, he accidentally saw Medusa and the others bathing, and out of shame, they attacked him. But Kazume was right there, and he saw the witches in the tower. She was looking for them for a long time, and so quickly went to attack the witches from the tower. But Akagari prevented her from catching them. Medusa came to help Akagari, and when she, bite Takamiya, lost consciousness. He dreamed of the conversations between Akagari and Medusa while he was unconscious. When Takamiya recovered consciousness, he saw Akagari's transformation after her merger with Medusa, and they began to fight until she turned Kazume into stone. Akagari thought she had defeated her mother, but suddenly she caught her after the effect of Medusa's power immediately passed on her. And when Akazume was trapped punching Akagari, Takamiya caused them to change places, resulting in him getting the punch and losing consciousness again. When he woke up, he and Akagari were locked up, and she told him the same thing that their teacher Makage had mentioned about the five seals on his body. Basically, she planned to defeat her mother, because if they defeated her, she would surely become an ally of them. Meanwhile, on the other side of the screen, Akazumi was trapped coming back, 
carrying Medusa to torture her. But suddenly, two witches from the workshop arrive and take Medusa to force. Because of this, she has not yet found out about the destruction of a seal on Takamiya's body. A while later, Takamiya and Akagari manage to get out of prison, all because of the frustration of Akazume, who sent them back home. At school, as they went down the stairs, they heard a noise and went quickly there. When they arrived in the area, they saw a group of people using animal fantasies that were causing trouble. They were being chased by these people when Toko stumbled and Takamiya came back to help her. The leader of that group, Hein, approached him and handed him a letter telling him to go to his gym. Toko mentioned to Takamiya that she saw the former student council chairman informing Heine about his problem, and that may be why that group is causing problems. In this, we see that Akagari knew that the leader of the group was known as Hein, the bear killer, all because she killed a bear named Luke Bear. Hearing this, Takamiya decided to go alone, without meeting Hein at the gym. Inside the gym, there were other students who were twisting for them to fight. So Hein approached and defeated Takamiya. And when she was about to give him another blow, he remembered Akagari's advice on how to defeat an opponent. Thus, he was able to avoid the attack and re-evitate the Hein coup. Suddenly, the light went out and Kuraishi's group came to get Takamiya, and this time Heine was attacked for interfering in the fight. Akagari also came and kicked Hein's face, sending her directly into the world of forced dreams. So, when the light turned on again, Takamiya's friends made him position himself as the winner, even the guy being literally fainted. After that, Hein discovered that the president of the former student council, and that they were also accomplices in the plan to increase Takamiya's confidence in everyone. One day, Akagari took Takamiya there for a training on how to master more of his power. She released monster-like flames for Takamiya to fight them. The flames began to attack Takamiya, but he was unable to fight properly because he had not yet released his relative. He was hit with force, and Akagari immediately prevented his flaming monster from continuing to attack the Takamiya. Akagari was about to quit training, but Takamiya didn't want to stop training because he wanted to be stronger and not be a big piece of ass protected by her anymore. And to help him, Akagari took him to the edge of the building and dropped him without letting him use the dish and Akagari this time wanted to assist him by putting him in a situation of danger. And when he was just a few meters from the ground, Akagari decided to help him, but suddenly Takamiya released a giant nurse as his relative. She gave a juice in the building to the opposite side, and after that, Takamiya suddenly weakened, losing consciousness and causing his relative to disappear at the same time. Meanwhile, Kasane went to a place with Hein, and they saw the bomb that his enemy used to take the whole city hostage. This was done by a woman called the Weekend Witch, and she's a Tower Witch. She met Kasani, and everybody thought the Weekend Witch was using that bomb to be able to get Takamiya, but they ended up discovering that the bomb was a completely different subject. Rapidly, it began to blow up different parts of the city with this bomb, and because of this, Kasane weakened. Takamiya and Kagari left the school immediately and went to Kazumi and Hein's house. There he met Natsumi, the leader of the workshop's five witches, who were assigned to protect the entire city. While Explaining to them about the explosions that were happening, Natsumi fired at them, but Takamiya and Kagari immediately kicked him. However, the shots at Takamiya were transferred to Kagari, causing her to get hurt and lose consciousness. Everybody now planned to hide Takamiya in a room, and as he could do nothing else, Takamija took Kagari with him. And when Kagari woke up, she explained to Takamiya the possible reasons why they were imprisoned, and one of them was Kasan's defeat. And Natsumi was waiting for their recovery while making sure the witches of the tower lose. In short, the Weekend Witch is strong, and if our main characters weren't hidden, the Weekend Witch would probably be able to take them. Suddenly, a pelvic bear fell, and the message of the Weekend Witch was about to be transmitted, but Kagari immediately destroyed it. After that, the two forced the way, leaving the room, and soon saw the city destroyed by the explosions. On the other hand, the Weekend Witch gave the workshop witches 30 minutes to take the Takamiya to her, or the bomb bombs trapped in each of the witches would explode, and as Kagari and Takamiya approached their destination, they were greeted by the sound of the Weekend Witch. She attacked them, and since they could not use magic, they obviously had difficulty fighting properly. Fortunately, due to the strength of Kagari's physical attack, she still defeated him. After that, Natsumi went to the Weekend Witch to negotiate with her for more time, but she did not agree to the request. And, when Takamiya and Kagari arrived at the scene, he approached to get the contract with her, and before the Weekend Witch 
which could detonate the bombs, Takamija had concluded the contract. As a result, the witches of the workshop had their powers restored. Because of this, Natsumi and the others rescued the bomb witches, and they managed to defeat the weekend witch. The weakened Takamiya ended up doing the same as ever, losing consciousness and waking up next to Kagari. And when the weekend witch was taken to her prison, she detonated a common bomb and some of her allies appeared. As she ran away, our protagonist saw the other witches in the workshop being attacked. So the Takamiya used his power to heal his companions, but Kagari was forced to put him to sleep because he was using a lot of his power, which weakened the silo. She took care of him until Tori arrived, and Kagari asked for Tori to take care of Takamiya. Meanwhile, on the other side of the screen, Akazumi fought against the witch's ally of the weekend, when suddenly Medusa appeared to help him, and immediately the opponents were defeated. After the fight, she took her lackeys and left in the area. Kagari borrowed Tori's gun and immediately went out to meet the witch of the weekend. When she arrived there, she immediately attacked her and realized that they were surrounded by bombs, and despite the danger, the battle continued, with Kagari not using all of her power because the Takamiya was not on her side. The only thing she did was to wear his clothes to be able to follow the fighting power of the weakened witch, and when she almost defeated the weekend's witch, the enemy summoned monsters, and while Takamiya was still unconscious, he dreamed of Kazumi's past, and suddenly he met Mikage, who showed him something, and as the conversation continued, somebody abruptly attacked them, and that was also a weekend witch's ally. Because of this, Mikage forced Takamiya to wake up so that he could get out of there, because he was the enemy's target. When he woke up, he immediately asked Tori where Kagari was, but before she could answer him, Mikage called Tori and told him that several bombs had been planted by the enemy during the evacuation. When Takamiya found out, he forced Tori to take him to Kagari. Meanwhile, Kagari was getting weaker and being kept by the monsters. Then the Witch of the Weekend blew up the monsters that captured Kagari. Fortunately, the Takamiya arrived at the site, which caused Kagari to regain its strength and be able to use all of its power. She fought with the Weekend Witch and defeated her this time. But the Weekend's Witch had pushed the bomb control, and Takamiya could see what danger was coming. So he tried to use his power, but only succeeded in weakening it. So he dreamed, and saw himself in the place where the White Princess appeared, and the White Princess told him that he could meet his request to return the people and buildings that were affected by the explosion, but in return, she would want his own life. The Takamiya did not hesitate and used power immediately, which resulted in the city being immediately restored to its former appearance, but in return, he would lose his life. After that, Kagari approached Takamiya to stop him. He said that Evermillion, or the White Princess, would take her life instead of his. Having said that, Kagari immediately returned to her normal shape, and when Takamiya was about to approach her, the Weekend Witch stabbed him. He pulled out the knife and tried to attack the Weekend Witch, but he was too weak and fell to the ground. This gave the Weekend Witch a chance to escape, and when they left, Komori was waiting for them and asked them to go with her, but the two began to fight, and the Weekend Wizard immediately lost. After that, our protagonist was sought by the girl, and Mikaji was also looking, and Kagari also broke out and explained the whole situation of Takamiya. She said it was not possible for another life to be used in the place, as it was Takamiya who made the deal with Evermillion. Because of this, Mikaji thought of a way to save him, and she wanted Takamiya to do everything possible to save Kagari's life. They started doing this with the help of Atari, and the last thing Takamiya had to do was kiss Kagari. He kissed her on the forehead, but that didn't change anything, so everyone asked him to kiss her lips. Takamiya was shy, but to save his beloved human shield, he would be able to do anything. However, before he went with everything to crush her lips, Kagari's breath returned, and she woke up. On the other hand, after leaving prison, Kazami, or Kazami, went straight to the location of Komori and the Witch of the Weekend. Then the Weekend Witch discovered that her enemy didn't need a week to regain his strength. Instead, the enemy only appreciated 20 hours, but she decided to stay in jail and let Kagari and the others face the enemies, and now Kazami wanted to go down the fucking Weekend Witch and Komori, and as promises debt, it really was done. After all this, Takamiya discovered that Evermillion promised Kagari something, that she would appear if Takamiya was in danger, and Evermillion also confessed that it was not she who gave power to Takamija, 
but rather Takamija himself, who released his own power to put people and the city in order again, and after the incident they continued to live in peace, until one day when they were going to school, they were stopped by the five witches of the tower, but in the end they ended up being defeated, as usually happens in this anime. <laughs>